Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Playing Channel. I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited to do my new releases here on my budget sheets for my Etsy store. Um, my Etsy store is called Lisa's Faith Budget Plan and I have a link in the description box below uh, if you'd like to check them out for yourselves. These listings are already active in the shop. Um, I always put the listings in the shop, make them active, and then film a video. Um, that way it runs a little smoother that way. But I have something different this month. Um, not so much new budget sheets, but I redesigned um, how I'm putting them in my shop. And there are going to be three sizes for you. Um, I'm really excited. It's taken me a while to figure out how to do that and um, how I create my budget sheets. But I wanted to go ahead and release them with three sizes. That way you can print the size you want without having to resize with your printer. And when I say three sizes, all of my sheets in my PDFs are eight and a half by 11. That doesn't change. But I will show you using my calendar here, um, sheets, and you're gonna see this is pretty thick. I got several printed um, items here. Um, I normally don't have this many printed, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about giving some of these away. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. Um, but. I can do a giveaway with uh, the sheets that I've already printed, but this is the standard sheet I normally show you uh, for the calendar for July is what the design is called July balloons. And it's just a patriotic uh, red, white, and blue for the month of July. The 4th of July is on a Sunday this year. And this is the calendar for the month. This is what I call my eight and a half by 11 size. And um, this is what I typically use when I film my videos. So this month in July, I'm going to try, and we'll see how well this works, I'm not so sure. Um, I probably will still use these, but I will show an example um, what it would look like in an A5 size. Um, so um, those eight and a half by 11, is one size, Classic Happy Planner is the second size, and A5 is the other. And I did that because I got the Erin Condren A5 um, agenda with the um, with um, the rings. So um, I'm really excited about that, and I will do a different video on that one. But today we're just doing the budget sheets, and then I might at the end show you my agenda, what I'm thinking about there. So hopefully this is not too long of a video. So this is one listing by itself that includes the eight and a half by 11 print and go sheets. Now, I also have this A5 calendar with the um, corners already marked for where you would do the cut lines for the A5. So if you print at regular size about, um, I think my printer says when I print regularly, it says 97% of the page is filled. Um, that is how, these sheets come out for me when I print them. I don't change any settings. I just leave it like that and it leaves a little bit of a border and 97% of the page is filled with my design. So what I did is I print it, uh, what I did is I went into my design and I put these lines and adjusted the lines until they fit into where it matches with an A5. So what I will do is pull out my Erin Condren um, agenda that I purchased, which is really cute. I don't want to show you everything just yet, um, but I will randomly grab an A5 page and just kind of pop it out here. And this is like the September sheet. Let me do the lines one. That might be easier. Let's see, just a blank line page front and back. That'll work and kind of put this off to the side. And um, when you take this, you can see I fit it based on these sheets, the A5 agenda. And you see the, ha the marks are in each of the corners of the piece of paper. It's not perfect, perfect, but it's close to perfect as I can get, making this an A5 size. Now, the space you see on either side has to do with the hole punch. So when you line it up, you can see um, that the holes will not line up with the calendar itself. It may come close, but it, it won't line up exactly. And then also here on this side, you can tell it'll come close, but it's not right on top of where the uh, lines are when you wanna take your notes. Not that you would punch on the side, but maybe you would, I don't know. It doesn't matter, either page, either way. So they fit and they're all formatted to the same cut lines. All I did was copy and paste and make sure the cut lines were all in the same place. 
and you should just be able to print and cut and not have to think about size. So I really do like that. This is the A5 calendar and this is how it would look shrunk down to fit that. Um, you do not have to reset your printer to be A5. You don't have to change anything because the document itself is an eight and a half by 11. So it's meant to be print on eight and a half by 11 and for you to cut along where um, you need to cut. Now, when you do cut, I do highly recommend go ahead and place your uh, A5 sheet. If you have other A5 sheets on top and take a ruler and extend it so you can draw your lines even further out and cut where the dimensions are where you want to cut. So, and kind of trace it out with pencil or whatever, and that should work out pretty well. Um, so, so this is new territory for me. This is all new. <laughs> I'm really excited. Now the classic happy planner size, um, this is what it would look like for the classic calendar. And uh, hopefully I left enough room on the inside for the hole punch. And I believe I did, I have a spare sheet over here. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like where if you punched it on the inside here to lay your flat calendar flat, they all, all pretty much line up with these little marks. And then you can see these little mushroom punches here that are Happy Planner um, design. They do not go onto the calendar. Um, so you can just kind of lift this up. You can see the calendars over here. It may come close, but it's not gonna go on the calendar. Same thing for this side. I have marks here. And you can see here, these are not interfering with the calendar at all either. That is how I designed it for every sheet that I created in here. I made sure that these, the punch for this was not was the same size as a happy planner punch so if you use a tool punch it's a little bit shorter than this um, if you use happy planner punch it is bigger so that's what i like um, and so i wanted to make sure that was taken in consideration when i designed all these budget sheets so there's the calendar and i'm gonna kind of set this off to the side Next, I have my variable and fixed budget sheets. So you've seen this size many, many times, um, but the listing is a little different this time. Instead of having um, a variable and fixed by itself, two page and one page, and I'll show you the sizes in a minute, um, you're gonna get a listing for one price um, with the two pages and the single page. So the first two that'll show up will be this, and then this li and this listing will have all three sizes. You're not gonna have to look for the sizes. You get not only the, the calendar in one size, you get calendar in all three sizes with one listing. Here, you're gonna have the budget sheets, the variable and fixed expenses here in a two page and a one page. This is all one listing and it's one listing um, one PDF with three pages for all three sizes. So you're gonna get this. You can choose this uh, size with all three sheets and they're all three different PDFs. So um, you're gonna have a PDF with three pages in the uh, eight and a half by 11. You're gonna have a, um, here's the A5. This is the two page right here. and then with the cut lines, and then um, the one page. It's the exact same number of lines and everything that the, the bigger size has is just fit to fit this specific size. Um, so you get the two page and the one page listing in A5, that's a second PDF. So this is your first PDF, this is your second PDF, it'll say A5, and then this will be your third PDF with the, and sorry, it's looking messy up here. <laughs> it's just, there's so many sheets and so many changes. I, I wanted to make sure, and I forgot to take the sheet out. I wrote, I'm trying to switch everything over to say notes only and not the rest of this. So um, I made a note to myself and I forgot to take it out and print a new one. But irregardless, it's gonna say notes right here. It's not gonna say notes on monthly and variable fixed income. I took all that out, just wrote notes. You, you have the same number of lines, and this size is the classic size. 
Um, so you get the two page and then the single page, and that's a third PDF with three pages. So three PDFs for pretty much most of the listings because there's three sizes. And within those um, three different sizes, there's going to be either, if it's a single PDF, it's just one, um, one in each PDF, um, one sheet in each PDF. If it's multiple pages like these, it's going to have three pages per PDF. So it just depends on what you're purchasing. And I hope I'm being very clear. If I'm not, please let me know in the comments. I'll answer any questions and comments for this. Um, no problem with that. And get all these sheets out of the way because uh, now it's really messy. And again, this is all one listing here. So you get all these and you can try out. The different sizes to see if you like a different size and you're getting all of them in one listing. So what did I do here? Oh, I know what this is. This is my personal budget. I always make them longer. This is my modified one. I think I have the right one over here somewhere. Hold on one second. Yeah, here it is. There we go. All right, take two. <laughs> All right, so this is um, another listing. It has several pages to it. There are three separate PDFs, and within those three PDFs, there are three pages. So PDF one is an eight and a half by 11. Um, you have six income, and then all of these lines here to do all your monthly bills on. And then you can total up your income minus your expenses and get to know whether you have enough money coming in for the month. And, uh, use, and this is the budget sheet that I typically use in my videos. I don't do the variable and fixed expenses because and separate them because they confuse me. But I do like doing it this way. I just put them in one long list. Um, and there's also included in this 8.5 by 11 listing is the um, income and then bills and expenses and then the total just one page sheet so if you only need the one page you get the one page if you need more you and you need to use two pages then that's all this is all one listing right here so you'll get all three sheets eight and a half by eleven and it's one price and you get to decide which one is best for you now here is the a5 version and this is the two page one this is the second pdf in the listing and so you will get a five and then bills and expenses and your income here two page you also get the one page if you don't need the two page and you can print out and then here are the cut lines for that and then we have the classic so the classic happy planner size um, is the third PDF with also three of the um, sheets. So you get the two budget sheets that go together uh, for if you need more than one page. And then you also get the uh, one sheet page for all for one price. You get all three of these in one PDF. So all of these are available for you to use. And it's all one listing, but you get all of the sizes. So uh, one listing, three PDFs per list, per not per listing, per page, and um, per PDF. All of this is one listing. Um, and when you purchase the listing, you're gonna get three PDFs with three pages each for all these budget sheets. And you get to decide what size you want and then if you need one or two pages with that budget. So you get a lot of bang for your buck and you get to try out different sizes. I think it's exciting and something new. I think it'll work really well. And um, I think people will really like it. So I am trying to find a place to put this down at. Next listing is gonna be really big. It is the Paycheck to Paycheck Budgets. If you've seen my budgeting before, this is my favorite way to budget. Um, you're budgeting with actual cash, actual income that has come into your bank account and you just design that to work with the bills that are what comes out what bills come out of what pay and so there's paycheck one two and three and paycheck four and five so 
this is all one, um, all these sheets are one listing. You're gonna get one PDF with five pages. So this is one PDF right here. And there's a lot right here. <laughs> so one PDF with all five of these and um, you use the ones that you need and only print the ones that you need. This is the eight and a half by 11 size. So this is one PDF right here. You will get this in your listing. You will also get the A5 size of the same thing. And I can't quite lay them out like the other. So paycheck one, paycheck two, paycheck three. They're this exact same paychecks as these, um, just shrunk down to a smaller size and fit in the cut lines. And then four, and five. So this is um, one listing, five PDFs under the A5 size. So there's that. So this is your first PDF, your second PDF, and then your third PDF. All of these will have three PDFs and then they will have either one page or multiple pages within the PDF itself to fit the size. So there's paycheck one, paycheck two, paycheck three, four, and five. Now I only do the one design a month um, just because it just makes my life a lot easier <laughs> and simpler. And um, I like doing it that way. It just, it's very cohesive. You're looking at a new design every month and then by the end of the month, you're ready to move on to another design. So this is one listing by itself relatively still inexpensive but you get all these different sizes something new to try out if you're interested in something new and i don't know why i did this but i forgot to print the transaction log in three sizes um, but here's the eight and a half by eleven and then there will be an a5 and a classic happy planner as well uh, in this um design for the um listing so you'll get one sheet in the A5, you will get one sheet in, or one. So you will get in your transaction log an eight and a half by 11 PDF with one page. You'll get a classic happy planner in one page PDF, and then you'll get a A5 one page PDF. So you get three PDFs, but there's only one page in each of the um, PDFs. And that is how I have that listing set up. So they're all set up identical. but um, they are um, set up by their size and I kind of kept them as cohesive as possible. So here's your weekly check-in. Uh, one of my favorite ways to budget is checking in every week and making sure I'm staying on track with my budget. And you have your five categories, same as always, notes. Um, again, I think I designed it with the notes only over here and this is gone as far as notes on spending habits because I actually don't even write that kind of note. I, I break down my budget for each week on how I, how I plan to spend and how uh, much money is going to be carried over from week to week and things like that. So, and what I plan to spend for the entire month. So that is one listing for the eight and a half by 11. This is one PDF with two pages. This is a second PDF under the same listing as this. Um, you get the A5 weekly and you get the same sheet here. It's just a little bit smaller. And see, I rewrote it with just notes. So I, I have that in there. And I love how that turned out. It's a lot cleaner and simpler. And it's just something you can write notes on um, about how your weeks are going or why or whatever you want to write a note to yourself for. So that's the A5 size. And this is the classic size, which is slightly larger. And it should fit with the cut lines. And this one also just says notes. Um, there's that. Sinking funds, so one listing, three sizes. You're gonna get all three of these sizes in three different PDFs. Um, I thought I would separate the sizes into three different PDFs to make it easier so you're only clicking on the one that you wanna download for yourself. You can download all three PDFs, um, but you can decide which one you wanna print and having them separate PDFs I thought would make it simpler to compartmentalize. So this is the eight and a half by 11, this is A5, and this is the classic happy planner size. So there's that, sinking funds with your categories, beginnings, how much you add, how much you take out, and 
the endings for the next month. So there's that. It's interesting to see them all side by side. So you can see the different variants of sizes. Uh, here's the other savings. Here's a savings tracker. I have two different kinds. So one is in boxes. I'll show you that next. And then I have just the log where you can track on a log with date, beginning, how much you add, how much you subtract, and your ending. And this is one PDF in your listing. You will also get this PDF for the A5 size and the classic Happy Planner size. So all three of these are purchased at once in one listing, but three different PDFs. That way you can um, pick which one when you download. I love it. I think it's going to be exciting. <laughs> Woo, there's a lot of these. So here's the one with the boxes. Um, I hope you like how this turned out. Um, they're kind of small when you have to do the A5 size, um, but if you have small handwriting and you enjoy small um, ways to track things, then this would be perfect. But that's same amount, same everything, just condensed down into the size. Um, so A5 and Classic, you get three PDFs, one page per PDF. So that is that, Savings Tracker. And I also have a debt tracker and I need to separate it just for a second. There we go. The debt tracker, eight and a half by 11, one PDF, two PDF, second PDF is a five and um, classic happy planner size debt tracker. This is just the log where you can just kind of write down and go write it as you go. If you have several or just a few, it doesn't matter. Um, it's a way of tracking your, let's use this sheet here, your debt, your starting balance, how much you paid, interest, and ending balance. You get an A5 and classic Happy Planner size, um, which I really like this. When I was doing my debt payoff, I could list them all out and see where things were and um, which was being paid off faster and which one I had to pay interest on and just really kind of calculate which was the debt I needed to pay off the most first and that helped me organize with that later i, I wish kind of wish i had this one too um, this is a debt snowball tracker um, with the debt starting balance minimum payment the amount paid in interest charge and ending balance so if you are on a debt payoff journey um where right now we're consumer debt free and we're not accelerating our debt payoff to our mortgage we are actually um saving up for our six month emergency fund so we're not focused on the mortgage debt, but we've paid off all consumer debt. We have no car loans. We have no um, credit card debt. We pay it off every month. Um, so that's zero at the first of every month. And we are very intentional with every penny that comes in and goes out. But if I wanted to track it I, and I wanted to accelerate my mortgage debt payoff, I could write mortgage right here or the bank or whatever. And then my starting balance for this month and then what the minimum payment was to the balance of the mortgage and then the amount paid um, and the interest charged for that and what the Indian balance is. The difference between this and um, what uh, my uh, a credit card would be is I may wanna track what was the homeowner's insurance and what was the property tax paid in as well because you put it all together in one payment. Um, but for credit cards, you would put like a Visa or a MasterCard or whatever your credit card is, your starting balance, what your minimum payment is, the amount you actually paid, the interest charge, and the ending balance. And the great thing about Snowball uh, Debt Tracker is if you're paying your minimum payment and then throwing another payment of Snowball that's $100 more or $200 more, whatever it is that you're doing, um, it... it you can see a big difference in these blocks of different debts, especially if you have more than one credit card you're trying to pay or car payment you're trying to pay, having these individual blocks to separate it all really makes it makes you see and focus what debt is critical and what is important to you, what would work best to pay off first and things like that. So I really like that. I do have it in the three sizes with the, this is one, listing with three PDFs in three sizes, and each PDF has one page. So you get the Debt Snowball Tracker, you get the A5, and you get the classic Happy Planner's Snowball Debt Size. So um, these turned out pretty well. I like how they turned out. I did 
adjust this one where there's more space to make this a little bit bigger um, to have room to write. But um, other than that, that's the only change I made. As far as the sizes, that's about it. Um, so those are my three Dutch um, Snowball pages in one listing. The last one I have um, is now my new favorite. <laughs> because I stopped using my credit card for a long time. I can tell my credit score wasn't staying stable, I guess, after we paid off all our debt. It was still high. It was like in the 700s, 710, 720. Um, but I wasn't using any credit. And the only thing I really had debt wise was the mortgage and that kept our credit score up. But I paid off so many old debts all at once over a 15 month period. It was $44,000 worth of debt that, um, yeah, I, I could see where my credit score was falling. So I was like, I don't like that because I know we need to buy a house in the future. Um, we may not be staying in the house that we're in right now. And I want to keep that credit score up because I have to play the game with the bank to make my life easier <laughs> as far as getting a loan. So I came up with this credit card log. I can write the date. I can write the amount. And usually what I do is the first of the month because our balances aren't due until towards the end of the month and interest accrues after that. So the first of the month um, amount, I just put zero here. In my description, I say um, available credit or something along those lines. I have to look and see, hold on. We'll pull up this month's credit card log. <laughs> um, da -da -bum. There it is. All right, so this is this month's credit card log. So I put available credit and then total owed and then available credit. So I write, this is the description of the first thing I write. And so 24,000 is the max our limit is. And that's really, really high. And I wish it wasn't that high, but it is. <laughs> so we just kind of leave it there. And then I start deducting any um, subscriptions that I've assigned to that credit card. So we started putting all subscriptions like um, for our Roku, we have like Sling and we have Amazon Prime and we have um, Disney, well, Disney Plus I pay once a year. Um, what's the other one we got? Discovery Plus. And I think that's it. There's just a handful of subscriptions and I put 24,000 here. And then when the first subscription comes out, which is usually some Etsy fees here, I have that taken out and then I, have my um, husband's uh, Amazon Music come out and then I have all the things, all the subscriptions come out. And if we decide to use the credit card for something else, like you'll see in my um, credit card log for July at the end of the month, that will be um, for um, GalaxyCon. My son and I plan to go to Raleigh, North Carolina and go to GalaxyCon. We're really excited. I just bought our tickets. I wanted to go ahead and put them on the credit card now. And then I'm going to pay for it later intentionally by the end of this month. And I know I'll have the money to do it. I just wanted to purchase it when purchasing over the internet. I prefer my credit card over my um, debit card. <laughs> so um, things like that. So yeah, I really love this thing. It makes it intentional and it keeps me focused on how much I'm actually putting on the credit card and that I'm not um, abusing it or causing myself problems by not by putting so much on there that I can't pay it off at all off at the end of the month. So and this comes in three sizes, you get one listing, you get the eight and a half by 11, you get this is the a five size, and you get the um, this one as well, which is classic happy planner size. So these three sizes are one listing and they're three different PDFs with one page in each PDF. So that's how I have it in the system. And yeah, that is what I have in budget sheets. These are new and I'm really, really excited for that. And I can't wait for you guys to take a look and see if you're interested in them and purchasing them for yourselves. I do have one more listing and I'm really excited about and these are the cash envelopes so first one i'm going to show you is how it will print and what it will look like when you print it so this is the first one it's got all these beautiful balloons red white and blue um this box i put a gray border because there was enough white space that it would be hard for you to cut at the right angles sometimes so you cut out the gray border and then you have your cash envelope so that's what i have there 
Um, so when you first print it out, that's what it looked like. And this is design one. <laughs> Another design that I have is um, these are cut out. I'll have, I'll show you three that are actually um, not folded. I've got this design. I've got this design, which I love the stars with the flags. That's really, really cute. I've got these fireworks designs. And then I've got two that are already folded. Um, this one is the flag with balloons. I'm trying to decide which one to show you. And it's really cute. I've already folded it once, so I'm gonna show you again. Um, I love this. And then another one that I have folded, which is um, kind of tacky. Um, I didn't use the right glue stick, so it didn't stay very well. <laughs> Actually, I didn't use it. I used a re, re, uh, removable adhesive instead of the permanent, and that's why it's not sticking. So you want to use something permanent once you fold it down. I'm going to take this adhesive off real quick while we're talking, and um, there we go. It just comes right off. And here's another one that was folded, but these balloons, and I thought that was really cute. So you get six designs. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. And then this is your sixth design right here. And this one, ha this has the balloons with the stars on it, which I thought was really cool. So there's several ways that you can use this for anything that you want. Um, and if you save up 4th of July and you get these, um, you can print these anytime during the year and uh, make a cash envelope for next year and use this as a way of saving up um, for your 4th of July of next year and things like that in celebration. But I really love these. So what, the way I fold them, I usually use a ruler and I kind of lay it right here and it folds this way. And then I fold these flaps. You can either have the flaps on the outside or the inside. I like them on the inside so it gives a solid thing. And you'll see that the balloons are all facing the same direction whichever way you do this. But if you open it straight up, these are upside down. And I did that on purpose so it would look cohesive and work very well. You can keep this flap on top or you can cut it off. If you're laminating, I recommend you cut it off. Um, if you're not laminating and you want the flap, then I would recommend just leaving it like this. Paper or laminate it, it doesn't matter. I do have an example of laminated one right here. So this is in my shop as well under cash envelopes. Um, this is just a purple one that I found that I really fell in love with. And uh, it's my emergency cash at home kind of thing. And as you can see, there's a lot in here. And these are the same size as far as when you print them and cut them, I make them all the same size. They all come with, and I gotta pull that out, these, um, slips that you can cut. It's a sheet of six uh, cash teller slips as well as you get six of these and I've already cut them out but you get one sheet that has six of these and then I think you get three sheet or two sheets of three um, transaction logs or these um, what, they, what do I call them? I don't know. To track what you spent. Trackers. There you go, cash trackers. And you can label the top for whatever you labeled on the cash envelope. I use on my lamination, it's smeared a little bit, but um, uh, wet erase markers. You could probably use some kind of Sharpie or something like that and use an alcohol strip and wipe it off. Um, so that's there. Uh, but yeah, these come with it and these come with it. And this is all one listing. This does not come with it. But if you, this is just an example. If you laminated it, um, the flap won't stay folded over. So I just cut them off and then lamp, run it through the lamination and I have a cash envelope. And that's really cool, I like that. And like I said, they hold quite a bit and they're very sturdy with the correct paper. Um, if you do you know, a heavier pound paper or a cardstock paper, um, they hold up very, very well. So I really like them. So that is what I have in my listings. <laughs> so <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video um, and um, I hope you enjoy these budget sheets. And if you do like them, please give this a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos on budgeting or faith, um, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Have an amazing and blessed day. Bye.